Imagine this, your entire city has just burned to the ground. Everything you know is gone, but you want to bring it back. You want to replace the devastation by creating happy memories. Hi everyone, Ken here. Welcome to This House. Today we are exploring the home of George Pullman in Chicago, Illinois. Make sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House. After the Great Chicago Fire, several millionaires set out to rebuild Chicago from the ashes. One of these millionaires was George Pullman. He was an innovator and engineer. He built an entire town, which he would name Pullman, to manufacture his Pullman sleeping cars, also known as palace cars. These would act as hotel rooms on wheels, with sleeping quarters, dining rooms, and kitchens for passengers traveling across the country. This innovation in travel accommodations made him a fortune. In 1872, he set out to build his dream house, finding a lot on the corner of Prairie and 18th Street. At the time, it was the most expensive residential lot to ever be purchased in Chicago at a price of $500 per front-facing foot, or the modern-day equivalent of about $11,000 per foot. He hired architect Henry S. Jeffrey to design the Second Empire-style palace. Henry had worked in the offices of Richard Morris Hunt, the choice architect of the Vanderbilt family, and was familiar with the expectations of the barons of industry. The influence of his earlier career would become evident in the design of this house. The facade would be clad in Connecticut brownstone, the same material used on the Vanderbilt's Triple Palace in Manhattan. It would measure 108 feet by 70 feet, with each floor boasting over 7,000 square feet of living space. All combined, the house was an astounding 22,680 square feet. The mansion would be surrounded by a meticulously maintained lawn and receive guests through a massive porte cochere. Once inside, the spectacle of opulence ensued. The walls were covered in rich mahogany and intricately carved by artists. Every room following the entrance hall was more grand than the last. From the reception room to a 200-seat theater, the home was the mecca of entertainment, with billiards and a bowling alley. Circulating about, you would have found a lavish library and a conservatory to bask in the morning light. But there was one room in particular that overshadowed the rest. The very center of entertainment in this house, the drawing room. The Tribune reported that, in point of location, size, and architecture, it surpasses any room of its kind in Chicago, whether public or private. The room was gilded with gold leaf set against inlaid ivory. It helped to usher in a new era of opulence for Chicago, as it would formally enter the Gilded Age. It was said that the home of the Pullmans was forever ablaze with party lights, with soirees, banquets, dinners, and balls being hosted several nights per week. The Pullmans spoiled their guests and filled their home with friends and family as often as possible, often entertaining 400 or more guests at a time. All this house was not enough for one event the Pullmans had planned, their daughter's wedding. George had a massive addition added to the northeast corner of the estate. It would include a new library, billiard rooms, and a pall room with a 40-foot glass dome soaring overhead. From here, new terraces clad in marble would spill onto the lawn. Wanting only the best for his daughter's special day, he had the entire house redecorated. Altogether, renovations for the wedding cost about $100,000, or the modern-day equivalent of about $3.5 million. The wedding went off without a hitch, being one of, if not the most, beautiful ceremonies to ever take place in Chicago. The joy would not last long. In 1897, George suffered a fatal heart attack. His widow would continue to live in the house part-time as she would rotate around the country living in her various vacation homes. She passed away in 1921, leaving the home to her children, who would claim much of the artwork and furniture before putting the rest up to auction. The house, however, did not sell and was demolished in 1922. With the Gold Coast neighborhood now established as the prominent spot for Chicago elites, Prairie Street was undesirable. In 1941, the lot was finally redeveloped to be used as a bus depot, but that would be demolished again in the year 2000. Today, the neighborhood has swung back to prominence with upscale townhomes and a luxury condominium building now occupying the lot. Thank you all for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Make sure you've hit that subscribe button and let me know what you thought about this house down in the comments below. While you're at it, make sure to check out our new merch shop to get yourself a This House coffee cup. I would also like to take a moment to say thank you to our This House supporters whose names you can see on screen right now. If you would like to see your name on the screen, please consider joining our membership program today. Till then, I'll see you next time on This House.